All right, today let's look at how absolute and relative uh, values have been completely separated in MA3 version 1.5. Very excited. Um, and so, yeah, let's, let's take a look. So the first thing to know um, is how to distinguish a absolute preset from a relative preset. Uh, in my example of my position here, you can see absolute presets have this little red square here, um, whether um, relative presets have this like more like light red, like light pink kind of color. In this case, you see this has both. This means that there's both um, like an absolute position stored and there's a relative around that that then you can choose. So let's see how to actually make these. Uh, for starters, I'm going to go and I am going to add my worlds and go into those. All right. I'm now going to select my circle VLs there. Just stick them at 100. Um, let's just stick them on the stage here. Um, and then I'm going to get rid of my playback here. And let's go and um, add our little phaser editor. All right. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to kind of, uh, I'm going to add a relative. So R plus here. And I'm going to kind of take them in here. Kind of like crisscross a little bit there. All right. And then I'm going to add a second point there. Maybe a third point as well. Let's twist them. They're going to spin out, twist back in. That looks kind of cool, actually. Um, let's kind of move points here a little bit. Let's kind of tighten this up a bit more. And then let's kind of bring this in a bit as well. That's certainly an interesting look. <laughs> Not sure I'd use that. But there we go. All right, so and now let's just... Um, Let's kind of swing those out a little bit. So we kind of have like an, certainly a very interesting look going on here. I'm now going to go store this. So store, let's store it here. And I'll label move one, don't use. <laughs> All right. So now let's see how this works. So if we clear everything out and we select our circle features here, we stick them on our move one don't use. All right, so you'll see it's not to the absolute position we set here, but now if I go to the stage preset, or actually probably the almost has a little better, take a look at that. It's running the same effect that we just created, but on a relative layer. So you can see that now it's doing that same effect, but based on the values within this almost high preset, or high or blind, almost blind, you know, all the different presets uh, that I have set, it will rearrange the values around that. That is really, really handy. If you are, um, let's say like you're working at a musical theatrical production or something, and you are, you know, like creating, maybe you know that there's like a ballyhoo moment that you need, but you're gonna need it on like different sides of the stage at different points in the show. Instead of creating two absolute or more presets or effects, you can just create one relative and then base it off of each one. So um, the relative layer in the actual encoder bar is down here. You can see if I switch my absolute to relative layer here, um, I can now add values uh, based on that. Now, these will be, again, relative, um, will be based on what you currently have selected. So uh, you have to keep that in mind that oh, this will be like negative or, you know, should I say like, you know, 20 degree, 20 degrees, 20 pan, but like within the context of what your other data is stored. Very, very helpful. You can do this with other, um, I use it most within positions, um, just because that's kind of my use for it. But you can use it within the other things as well, within color, um, dimmer, all that kind of stuff. Everything has an, a, uh, a relative layer. Uh, but position is probably the one you're going to be using most, at least when you're starting out. So check it out. Um, really, really helpful. I use them all the time, um, and you probably will too. So that is how absolute and relative uh, have been separated in MA, and this little addition makes it really easy to tell what is absolute and what is relative.